Welcome to Northern Lakes Community Church Online Worship Service. I hope it's been a good and joyful Easter week for you even in this very challenging time of pandemic crisis. If you are watching this from our church's website homepage, northernlakescc.org, you may be able to find the music portion of this service today that our fantastic worship leaders, Jill and Sanjay, put together. And they posted uh, their wonderful worship music for you. So after this message, I want to encourage you to go visit and click on the their links and feel free to sing along with them as you listen to their music. Our church is currently hosting Love Our Neighbors Project. And we're collecting and giving away to anyone in our community dry foods, uh, paper goods, and homemade masks. Uh, several bins are already outside uh, of our church entrance, so feel free to you know, stop by our church at any time, 24-7. We are located on Herkner Road right across from West Senior High School. I want to say thank you for worshiping with us today and for your generous financial support and gifts and talents that have been making possible and meaningful a project like this, Love Our Neighbors, for our community. Our online uh, giving is available and it's an excellent way for you to continue to support a community project like this. Please feel free to visit Give Now link after this worship service. This morning's gospel story begins with a post-resurrection scene. In fact, it was the first day after Easter that risen Jesus appeared to his disciples, but one of whom, Thomas, wasn't there for the first time when Jesus appeared to them. So here is a scene that uh, Jesus' disciples were sort of locked down on that day like us. And I'm going to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in His name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, there is an old beer commercial that a bunch of guys in a bar asking, 
one another the same question again and again in a comical way. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? They keep going on. And one guy is finally talking to another one on the phone. So what's going on? And the other guy replies, you don't want to know. So let me ask you the same question, but this time a little slower with maybe a standard diction. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing, really? I don't know what you're going to answer. But if you are sitting in my church worship place this morning as I, you know, preacher, I was asking you the same question, I bet I wouldn't have much time for myself to talk about my sermon today simply because each one of you would have a lot to express your concerns and anxious thoughts as the current pandemic crisis has been creating in you. I can understand what you are going through right now because you are not alone. I am in it. And we are all in this together. You've been hearing this phrase a lot. The phrase that I just mentioned to you. We are all in this together. Right? But do you believe that? Do you feel that, that you are also in this together with all other people around you, not just locally, but globally? Do you really feel the pain at, at the same level as those families who lost their loved ones or lost their jobs who, that might never be recoverable due to this pandemic? Have you ever thought about what if it was your loving husband, mother, son, sister, or grandmother whose lives are taken away and, and, and are maybe seriously affected by this crisis? How deeply do you feel and understand that we are all in this together in this current crisis? Well, some people might say, well, my plate is already full. I'm not sure if I can really do much about other people's feelings or problems. They are not really my problems. I'm not a problem solver. I'm not a psychologist. I have enough problems of my own to keep my nose down. I'm more concerned about my uncertain future. I am anxious these days about thinking, what if I lose my job or I lose my life in this current pandemic? Well, fair enough. I am with you. I can understand what you are going through right now because I am also in this together with you. In a similar way, this morning's scripture passage reminds us that God is truly with us in this together. As Jesus appears to his disciples and saying, Peace be with you. While they were all afraid of their uncertain future, hiding behind their closed doors. This week I read an article published by Time a couple of weeks ago. The title goes like this. The coronavirus pandemic may be causing an anxiety pandemic. This article recognized the statistical data of National Institute of Mental Health saying that just over 19% of all American adults will experience at least one anxiety disorder out of many over any 12-month period. Wow, that is really a long time to recover from. Almost one in five adults in our nation will be struggling with some sort of anxiety disorder, if that's true. Interestingly enough, 
out of all these different types of anxiety disorders, what caught my attention most was separation anxiety disorder, which can be caused by the so-called social distancing, six feet away from each other, that we are now all faithfully trying to follow. I guess all of us may not have a clear-cut separation anxiety disorder, but I'm wondering if we are all affected by this kind of anxiety simply because we are physically separated from one another, at least six feet away from each other. Maybe not your own family at home, but who knows. There are so many people working outside, they're worrying about what's in the air and what you're touching. You may bring that into your home, so you're afraid. Whether you like it or not, you and I are all being affected by some sort of anxiety disorder these days. According to a Chicago-based psychologist, Patrick McGrath says in, in that same article that I, I mentioned, anxiety disorders are based on two words, what if, followed by the worst scenario your brain can devise. So this past week, this is what exactly happened. A lot of what if questions were welling up in my mind and to be honest with you, I have wrestled with these troubling questions throughout the entire past week. And my anxiety level has been staying up pretty much all high throughout this week. What if this social distancing rule would become a new norm for everyone? So people were simply reluctant and afraid of coming to church. What if we would all become simply afraid of getting close, not just to each other, but to anyone? So there were no warm greetings in a church settings, or even appropriate touching or hugging each other on Sunday morning. What if churches like ours would become empty places, like the ones in many parts of Europe, most people wouldn't go to church to worship God, but just for a tour of the building. Just think about what Jesus' disciples like Thomas was going, were going through at, at the time of Jesus' death. They were probably thinking and that their lives were really in ruin. And their worst fear of Jesus' death has just happened. I can easily picture them finding themselves caught in, in an enormous anxiety. Just like many of the rational and skeptical people, Jesus' disciple, Thomas, needed some credible evidence and assurance that Jesus was truly alive and risen. He wanted and just needed to see Jesus' mark, touch it, experience it before he was willing to risk his com commitment and relationship again. He needed to see, to believe that Jesus was risen from the dead, alive and closely present with him. I'm sure much less than six feet. And he needed that kind of presence living faith. Of course, we cannot arbitrarily create this kind of living faith on our own because God has to come to us first. That's why Jesus didn't wait till Thomas' faith became mature enough. Jesus saw Thomas' desire and seeking to see and believe that Jesus was indeed risen. In his desperation, Thomas saw Jesus, Jesus of peace. As Jesus said, peace be with you. Jesus knew Thomas' fear, anxiety, 
doubt and failure. Jesus came to release Thomas from his fear and sets him free from the guilt and anxiety that locked him down. On Easter, Jesus' followers, like Thomas, reacted to the resurrection not with simple faith, but with anxiety, fear, terror, disbelief, and yes, doubt. Those are the very words that pepper all the accounts of the resurrection in the Gospels. But the reason Jesus gives us and gives them assurance, peace be with you. I have conquered death, the grave. Is there any bigger challenge than that? I am the Lord of life and death, and I will always be with you. Henry Ward Beecher once said, Every morning has two handles to open the new day. One is the handle of anxiety. Of course, the other, the handle of faith. When Jesus' disciples were having anxiety and finding themselves closed in behind locked doors, afraid, isolated, and abandoned, Jesus opened the door of faith in for them. The living faith became alive when Jesus walked in and, and brought peace into their lives. This past Thursday evening, when I was having an online fellowship with uh, some of you, something triggered my emotion. On that night, I felt that I was somehow greatly missing some of my dear people, especially my own family and even my own mother who passed away last summer. All of them were not physically present with me at that time. I was remembering a lot of my past times that I had taken for granted my family's physical loving presence in my life, so I became emotional. But Something else happened to me that night. One person after another on that night was suddenly pastoring and cheering me up, showing their deep loving care and support for me, who is their pastor. Wait, wait a minute. Aren't I supposed to pastor them? not necessarily to be pastored by them. I became humbled. Then I was able to affirm that phrase, yes, we are all in this together. And I found the peace of Christ within my heart when I was remembering what St. Augustine prayed as he said, you have made us for yourself, O Lord. Our heart is restless until it rests in you. For people of faith, doubt is not so much the enemy of their faith as it is their faith's adversarial dialogue partner. Good questions poke and prod and challenge, but in the end, by the grace of God, they can push and pull us toward a deeper and more mature living faith. So, when anxiety, fear, and doubt nip at our heels, remember the peace that the risen Christ gives you as it says, Peace be with you. Do not doubt, but believe. The peace that our risen Christ gives us will surely mature our faith, grow our faith.
into an ever more tempered, wise and well-seasoned trust in God. And remember this as well. Through all your doubts, God never doubts you. Because God is truly in this together with all of us and with this world. In the name of the Father, of the Son, the risen Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.